Hello! Today I am going to talk about 8mm video. First, a quick history of the format, and then the challenges of digitizing it and uploading it to a computer. 8mm video belongs to the family of color under video formats like Humatic, Betamax, and VHS. Three different versions have been developed. The original format, later rechristened Video 8, was introduced by Eastman Kodak in 1984. The same Eastman Kodak who invented Super 8 film format two decades earlier. The Kodak Vision, the first 8mm camcorder, used a traditional vacuum tube as pickup element and was manufactured by Matsushita. The tape was produced by TDK. Next year, Sony launched the revolutionary ultra compact Handycam camcorder with the CCD pickup element and quickly became the leader for the format. In 1989, Sony presented Hi8, an updated version of the format which offered higher resolution and wider dynamic range, but required high-quality tape. Finally, in 1999, Sony ported DV digital video to 8mm hardware, releasing Digital 8. In terms of audio, 8mm video employed audio frequency modulation, a method of recording high-quality audio alongside video, similar to Betamax Hi-Fi and VHS Hi-Fi. Initially, audio was recorded only as a single channel. This may seem as a gross oversight, but the format, originally intended for camcorders, needed all the bandwidth it could have for the video. In 1985, Sony introduced Pulse Code modulated digital audio. Its quality was lower than audio CD, but on the positive side, it could be overdubbed independently of video, unlike AFM. And it was in stereo. Later, machines that used 8mm hardware were introduced for sound recording only, allowing to record up to six digital audio tracks. In 1989, Canon introduced AFM stereo with its A1 Canon Vision Hi8 camcorder. Extra luminous bandwidth of the Hi8 system allowed to expand audio bandwidth without hurting the picture. Two tape formulations, MP and ME were used to produce two tape types, Standard 8 and High 8. MP tape came in both Standard and High 8 grades, ME tape was always High 8. The packaging doesn't always provide clear indication about the type of the tape. Different manufacturers use proprietary names and abbreviations like ED, HG, SX, SE, DC, EG, XDP. These abbreviations do not mean much, just like high grade label. The rule of thumb is, if there is no clear high 8 indication, this is just a standard 8 tape. In the 1980s, the 8mm consortium created a label to indicate tape formulation and recording time. The single letter prefix identifies tape formulation, P for metal particle, E for metal evaporated. Two numbers separated with a dash indicated recording time when a particular television system is used. 5 stands for 50 Hz television system, colloquially known as PAL. 6 stands for 60 Hz television system, known as NTSC. The number after the dash indicates recording time, which is about one-third shorter for PAL compared to NTSC. So 590 tape is equivalent to 6126, and similarly, 6120 tape is equivalent to 585. The most reliable way to figure out the tape type and formulation is to look at the reverse side of the cassette. It has two groups of dimples on each side, officially known as recognition holes. Here I have standard A tape. This super doesn't mean anything. MP, standard 8 and when recorded in NTSC uh, standard, uh, it's good for two hours. And you can see this is right protect notch. This way it's right protected when the hole is open. And if I close the hole, it's uh, right enabled. Both of these detection holes are closed, which means it's standard 8 tape. And on this side, this hole is open, which means it's a thinner tape than usual. 
Now this one is a Hi8 tape. It clearly says Hi8, Hi8, 120 minutes, MP. And on the back, this hole is open, which means that is Hi8 MP tape. And on this side, this hole is open, which means it's thinner tape, like 10 micrometer tape. And finally, ME tape, metal evaporated. Because it's metal evaporated, it starts with E. So it's a two hour tape when recorded in NTC standard. And here it says that uh, it's good both for high 8 and standard 8. That's the first ME tape that I have. I all my other tapes are MP. So let's look at it. Looks very nice. I, I like this big window. I mean, 8mm tapes and DV tapes and mini DV tapes, they all have more variations in design compared to VHS. And on the back, yes, we see that this hole. This one is closed, which uh, this hole that's uh, MP high 8, but this hole, which means it's ME high 8, is open. This is how the camcorder can detect the tape type. I don't think I'll be using this tape though, because an urban legend suggests that MP and ME tapes use incompatible lubricants. I don't mean oil or grease, but what is called back coat a thin layer of graphite or something similar to prevent tape loops from sticking one to another and to ensure smooth tape travel. Whether this incompatibility is truth or hearsay, I'd rather be safe than sorry. In 1993, Sony presented a 3-hour 8mm cassette. I have never held such a tape in my hands and I thought that a 3-hour tape was an experiment that went nowhere, but check out this digital 8 tape. The recording time is 90 minutes of digital video, which translates into 180 minutes of analog NTC video. Indeed, the tape length is 155 meters, just 2.5 meters shy of the Sony E6180 tape. And it has a different label, N890P. I guess 8 stands for 8 millimeters, but what N stands for? 8mm video was primarily intended for consumer camcorder market, but several standalone VCRs and compact video players have been produced as well. One could use these machines not only for playing home videos and for recording TV shows, but for watching pre-recorded movies. Here I have a movie on 8mm cassette from 1986, still in wrapper. Let's open it. Maybe I go open it here and push it through. Okay. 1985, that's the date of the movie. The cassette itself was released in 1986. Digital stereo, which means PCM audio. 112 minutes, that means it's a longer tape, because originally the tape was only up to 90 minutes, but by the end of 1995, longer tape, two-hour tape became available. On the other side, there is no right protect uh, notch. The hole is open, which means that the cassette is right protected. These two holes are closed, which means it's standard 8 tape. And on this side, this hole is open, which means it's a thinner tape than usual. Imagine if your movies that you uh, rented in Blockbuster or another rental store, you know, came in tapes of this side. I think it looks much much cooler and you can grab it in your hand just like a audio cassette. 
airlines extensively use the format for in-flight entertainment, to the extent that Sony briefly restarted production of Hi-8 tape in 2016. Sony also manufactured several professional Hi-8 VCRs that could be integrated with U-Matic and Betacam equipment. Just by looking at an 8mm video cassette, it's impossible to figure out whether it's recorded uh, standard video 8, Hi-8 or digital 8 format and whether audio is recorded in AFM mono, AFM stereo or PCM digital. There are three recording 8mm formats, standard 8, Hi-8 and digital 8. The first two are analog, the latter is digital. You can use any tape in any machine and the only time it matters is when you want to record in Hi-8 format, for which you need Hi-8 tape. Standard 8 video can be recorded on any tape. For digital 8 recordings, Hi-8 tape is recommended, but standard 8 tape can be used as well as digital format proved more resilient to tape imperfections than analog. There are several options to capture video and audio depending on the playback machine and on your computer configuration. Basic Video 8 machines have a composite output for video and usually a monophonic audio output. Hi-8 machines add an S-video output, S for separate, meaning that black and white and color portions of the image are transferred separately, which offers better quality than composite even for standard Video 8 recordings. Audio is often sent via two channels. Digital 8 machines add a FireWire port, also known as iLink or simply as DV port. It is a digital transport that carries both video and audio, as well as commands to control the playback. If you need to play an unknown tape, it is better to get a playback machine that is compatible with as many 8mm variations as possible. In my opinion, the best option would be a Digital 8 camcorder. Most Digital 8 camcorders can play analog recordings, but uh, some of them, mostly the later models, are digital only, so please consult the user manual. The best option to capture analog video is through S-Video port. This way you can use whatever analog to digital converter you like, and you'll be able to choose video and audio codec types and bit rates. For details, see my other video where I describe my digitizing workflow using virtual dub for Windows. In the same video I explain how to get rid of combing that you see in many YouTube videos. You can use that guide for processing DV video as well, because the steps are the same no matter DV or VHS or 8mm video after you have got your video on the computer. See the link in the description. Some Hi-8 and Digital 8 camcorders have built-in time-based corrector, which removes interline jitter in analog video and straightens up the frame. This is an invaluable feature, and unless you have an outboard TBC, I recommend turning the built-in TBC on. Digital 8 recordings should be captured via digital connection. This ensures that bits are sent from tape to a computer or another DV-capable device without re-encoding, preserving the original quality. Of course, the computer must have a FireWire port. If it doesn't, you can buy a FireWire expansion card for less than $20. FireWire is the best option for Digital 8 and is an easy and reliable option for analog video. S-Video is the best option for analog video if you know what you're doing and is an acceptable option for Digital 8. Composite offers the lowest quality and should be avoided if possible. But wait, there's more! Many Digital 8 camcorders can digitize analog video from an external source, so you can take your, for example, VHS uh, VCR or Betamax or whatever else you have with analog output and you can convert it into DV using a Digital 8 camcorder. Even better, here I have a camcorder on which the TBC works for an external source as well and Macrovision copy protection is ignored. Not that I advise digitizing VHS tapes with Hollywood movies, but there is a technical possibility for that. An obligatory remark regarding DV. Some purists dismiss DV as a viable option to digitize analog recordings for two reasons. First, for reduced chrominance resolution caused by DV color subsampling scheme, and second, for possible tiling, also known as microblocking, on busy or noisy scenes caused by the insufficient bitrate. In my opinion, both drawbacks are exaggerated and it's unlikely you will notice any difference between DV and uncompressed video. 
A third reason can rear its ugly head in some implementations of digital 8 camcorders when the dynamic range is distorted and the highlights are chopped off. Mind you, this is not a problem with DV codec per se, just a botched implementation. That is it. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.